everybody, welcome back to the Buffalo Zoo. We have another really cool feathered friend to introduce you guys to today. And we have Sarah, one of our bird handlers here at the zoo with us again today. So we have Bindi, our laughing kookaburra. Uh, Bindi is another one of our ambassador animals that we use for some of our programs. She gets the opportunity of coming out and teaching people all about birds and kookaburras specifically. So we're gonna see if Bindi wants to try and see if she can find some of these little super worms that we put down here into her mulch. So this is a really great enrichment that we're doing with Bindi today. Uh, as a kingfisher, uh, kookaburras would spend a good amount of their time having to hunt for their food and find their food. And many of the types of foods that they would eat aren't just limited to types of fish. They'll also find uh, lizards and snakes and even some mealworms like what she's getting right now. So kookaburras are found in Australia and their coloration helps them to camouflage with the brush where they live there. And you'll notice her big beak that she has would help her to scoop up some of those uh, bugs or critters that she wants to eat. So here at the zoo, we feed her a wide variety of prey items, including these mealworms. Uh, in a little while, you might also see me give her uh, some other little nuggets of things too. Um, so a lot of times what kookaburras will do is they'll tenderize their food before they start to eat it. So they'll take it and they'll whip it back and forth as they're trying to break it up into smaller pieces so they can swallow it or to soften it up a little bit to help it go down a little bit easier. Now we're gonna let Bindi have that little mealworm there and then we're gonna see if she can do what laughing kookaburras are known for. Bindi, are you ready? She's thinking about it. Nope, she's just gonna sit there and look at me. That's fine for now. So as a kookaburra, they are the largest member of the kingfisher family. There are many other types of kingfishers and we do have some that live right here in Western New York. So I challenge you guys to go out into your backyards and see if you can find some of the birds that we have right here in our own neighborhoods. You might just get really lucky if you live near water and find some of the kingfishers that we have right here. Now, a uh, kookaburra would live in a family group for a few years with uh, their parents and some of their siblings, and they'll do a really good job of letting each other know uh, where their territory lies and what other things are around them by using that call that Bindi is choosing not to show us today. We'll try again. You want to try? Ready? <laughs> We're providing some great auditory enrichment for the sea lions that are next door to us. You might hear them calling in the background as well. So lots of different animals respond to different sounds in different ways. So when a kookaburra hears one of its parents or siblings making that call, they know where their territory is and if they're in the same territory as their family. Do you wanna try and have some of these from my hand instead of going in the mulch? There you go. <laughs> Good girl. So Bindi loves coming out and enjoying some of the sunshine here on this nice spring day. And she's usually hanging out with us as we teach students all about birds, maybe teaching them about animals from a scrub habitat and comparing the different characteristics of different types of birds. Did you have a little bit of goo stuck on your beak on this side? Yeah, it's gone now. So <clears throat> Sarah, you work with Bindi every single day. Are there any special things that you'd like to share about Bindi and some of the things that she likes? Uh, so Jackie, Bindi here, um, obviously we named her for Bindi Irwin because they are from Australia. Uh, she's about two years old. She came to us from San Diego Zoo and she was hatched specifically to be an ambassador kookaburra. 
Um, so we do have other kookaburras here right uh, in the zoo, but those are exhibit birds. Uh, so Bindi here was raised with people. She spent a lot of time around people. So this is her everyday job. She loves coming out to be around people. She doesn't get stressed out. Um, I think she's just a little preoccupied with our sea lions, which is why she's not calling. <laughs> so we'll see if she wants to come up and then maybe we can get her to call this way. Uh, so we call these the, the Bushman's alarm clock. They will usually call bright early in the morning. And that's how, uh, Jackie, you were saying, that's how they establish their territory. So do you want to try again, Bindi? but just imagine a whole flock of them doing that in the morning or right before you go to bed in Australia. So these guys are really good in numbers. They are of least concern, but they are losing habitat due to developments, uh, new buildings and stuff like that. The, uh, they are part of the Kingfisher family, as you were saying, and their bills can kind of tell you that and explain because they, they eat fish. Mm -hmm. But kookaburras are some of the largest Kingfishers that we have in Australia, and they really actually don't like to eat fish. They will eat more lizards and snakes and mice, as you were saying, mm -hmm. and then they can, you know, whack them against a, a branch or something like that. Do you want to go back down? Just like this, please. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Where'd it go? Can you find it? Good job. There we go. That's a tasty little nugget, isn't it, Bindi? So the way that you can tell Bindi is a female is because she doesn't have a very vibrant feather plumage, whereas the males are going to have, she has uh, some blue right there because we're in the sunshine, but the males are very vibrant in the blue color on their, on their wings. And Bindi here is going to get a little bit larger. This is probably about as big as she will get. She is two years old, so she has, um, she's going to have a really long life here at the zoo. She loves her <laughs> life here. She's looking like she might go explore in that grass over there. That's all right. Good girl. <laughs> So as we were saying before, this is some really great enrichment and it's one of the cool things about being closed right now is that we're able to bring our animals out into areas that they don't often get a chance to explore when we're open to the public. Um, our zookeepers are normally very busy first thing in the morning when they first get here uh, to have the zoo up and ready for people to start arriving at 10 o'clock when we open. But since we've been closed, a lot of our animals have been getting a lot of extra space special experiences like this because the public isn't here, unfortunately, to get a chance to enjoy them. But that's what we're hoping these videos are doing for you guys, is bringing you some enrichment just as much as it's providing enrichment for our animals. I hope that you guys had fun getting a chance to learn about Bindi, our laughing kookaburra today. Uh, be sure to check out some of our other videos that we have and some of the other animals that we've had a chance to share with you guys while we're all staying home and staying healthy and staying safe. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> she wants to stay out. Wonderful exit there, Bindi. <laughs>